3. Explained T accounts and the trial balance and their usefulness in the preparation of financial statements. Chapter 4 introduces the general journal, the general ledger, and shows how to use both. In the real world, transactions are not recorded using the accounting equation, nor are they recorded using T accounts. Instead, businesses use a journal to record business transactions. The first objective of this chapter introduces the general journal. Here are the steps in the accounting cycle. The accounting cycle is a series of steps performed during each accounting period to classify, record, and summarize data for a business and to produce needed financial information. Take a moment to review the steps. Let's take a look at these steps in more detail. Our first objective is to learn how to record financial transactions in the general journal. A journal is a book of original entry. Just like in school when you kept a diary or journal of your activities, a business or accounting journal does the same thing. The journal keeps a record of the financial events, transactions, in the order that they occurred. We call this the chronological order. Journalizing means to record transactions in the journal. A business event, transaction, that has been recorded in the journal is called a journal entry. Take a look at a journal entry. Carolyn Wells, owner, invested $100,000 cash into the business on November 6. Let's look at each part of the journal entry. First, you should enter the year and the date of the transaction. Then enter the name of the account debited, flush against the line. Then place the dollar amount in the debit column. Next, drop down a line and indent one quarter to one half inch and write the name of the account credited. Place the dollar amount of the credit in the credit column. Once the transaction has been journalized, we need to indent a little and add an explanation of the event. The audit trail is a chain of references that make it possible to trace information, locate errors, and prevent fraud. This is an important part of each journal entry. Here are the steps to record a journal entry. Previously, we discussed the steps for journalizing. The starting point for any company is getting money into the company. Let's journalize this initial investment by the owner in the general journal. We need to debit cash for $100,000 and credit Carolyn Wells Capital for the same amount. This is the same entry that was used to describe the specific steps earlier. Here is the general journal entry. On November 7, Wells Consulting Services issued check 1001 for $5,000 to purchase a computer and other equipment. Equipment needs to be debited for $5,000 and cash needs to be credited for $5,000. Here is the general journal. Remember when we previously analyzed this transaction, we decided that we would debit equipment for $6,000 and credit accounts payable for the same amount. Here is the journal entry. Remember to include all important information in the explanation. This improves the audit trail. Next, Wells Consulting Services purchased supplies for $1,500 cash. So we need to debit supplies for $1,500 and credit cash for the same amount. Here is the general journal entry for the transaction. Now let's look at a partial payment on account to a supplier. On November 30, Wells Consulting Services paid Office Plus $2,500 in partial payment of invoice 2,223, check 1,003. When the business pays part of its bill for the equipment purchased earlier, it would debit accounts payable and credit cash for $2,500. Remember, in the general journal, always enter debits before credits.
On November 30, Wells Consulting Services wrote check 1004 for $8,000 to prepay rent for December and January. When the business pays for two months' rent in advance, it debits prepaid rent for $8,000 and credits cash for $8,000. Note that both accounts affected are assets. Here is the general journal entry. Let's take a look at how transactions affecting revenues and expenses will be recorded in the journal. Let's look at a transaction where the business performed services for $36,000 in cash. When the business performs consulting services and gets paid immediately, Wells Consulting will debit cash for $36,000 and credit fees income for the same amount. Here is the general journal entry. Next, let's assume that the firm performed services for $11,000 on account. Remember that we record the revenue as earned even though we haven't yet received the cash. When the firm performs services for credit clients, it will debit accounts receivable and credit fees income for $11,000. Here is the general journal entry on the 31st. Now let's see how we would record the collection of cash for an amount previously billed. When the firm collects $6,000 from credit customers, it needs to debit cash and credit accounts receivable. Here is the general journal entry. It's time to review how we would record transactions involving expenses. Our focus will be on journalizing the transaction. When the business pays $8,000 in salaries to its employees, they would debit salaries expense for $8,000 and credit cash for the same amount. Here is the general journal entry. When the business pays a utility bill of $650, it will debit utilities expense and credit cash for the $650 as shown in the general journal entry. When the owner withdraws $5,000 for personal use, the accountant will debit the Carolyn Wells drawing account and credit the cash account for the $5,000 withdrawal as shown. Remember that the drawing account is an equity account, not an expense. The third objective of this chapter shows us how to post journal entries into accounts in the general ledger. We learned how to journalize in our previous section. That was the second step in the accounting cycle. Now let's learn the third step in our accounting cycle, posting to ledgers. A ledger is the record of final entry. It is the last place that accounting transactions are recorded. When we transfer data from the general journal to the ledger, this is called posting. It's important that we keep a ledger so that we know at all times the cumulative balances in all of the accounts. T accounts represent the accounts in our ledger. All of our journal entries will update accounts in the ledger. A general ledger is a permanent, classified record of all accounts used in a firm's operation. The general ledger is the master reference file for the business. Here are the steps in the accounting cycle as shown previously. The accounting cycle is a series of steps performed during each accounting period to classify, record, and summarize data for a business and to produce needed financial information. Take a moment to review the steps. Let's take a look at these steps in more detail. The general ledger looks a lot like the general journal, but it has two additional balance columns. We will now post our general journal entries to the general ledger. Posting is the third objective of this chapter. Let's review the five steps of posting from the general journal to the general ledger. Step 1. Transfer the date and description, if necessary. Next, write the journal page that the journal entry is recorded on in the posting reference column in the general ledger. J refers to journal. 
Next, transfer the dollar amount to either the debit or the credit column of the general ledger action columns. Make sure that you enter the balance of the account after posting from the general journal. This is the most up-to-date balance in the account. Make sure you include the previous account balance in your current account balance. The last thing you need to do is to write the account number of the account in the post-ref column of the general journal. This indicates that the journal entry has been posted to the general ledger. The general ledger contains all of the accounts that exist in a business and all of their activity. In the general ledger, balance sheet accounts are listed first, then the income statement accounts are listed next. When I go on a listing like this is that there's problems with value sometimes. Well, you know what's really impressive when you first walk in? Sometimes errors are made in journalizing or posting. If the accountant wants to correct an error, the correction method will depend on whether or not the journal entry has been posted to the general ledger. Almost the entire house is hardwood. Beautiful. And Very nice. The house was originally built. Here is one correction method. Wow, this is our kitchen. Are you kidding me? How did you guys create this much space out of in a house of this Let's age? practice correcting an error that was discovered before it was posted to the general ledger. Cross out the incorrect amount and write the correct amount above the crossed out one. Post like normal after the correction is made. What if the error is discovered after posting? It is important never to erase in the journal or the ledger. Then Raven finally found a house that he wanted Hazel to see. We came to this house and we're standing out front. If the error is discovered after being posted to the general ledger, then a correcting journal entry must be journalized and posted. What do you think? If you discover an error after posting, it is best to make a correcting entry. A correcting entry is a journal entry made to correct an erroneous entry. In this journal entry, office equipment was debited instead of shop equipment. To correct this error, a correcting journal entry must be made. Here is the correcting journal entry. 